Okay, what we have today is a bullet head. Um, I've got a Daiichi 1280. It's a 2x long dry fly hook. And uh, I'm going to start dressing the hook with some uh, light brown Montana fly um, 8 aught thread. And I will switch the thread to GSP later in the fly. But I like to tie the majority of it with this 8 aught. So on the back of this fly, instead of adding like a tail of moose or, or elk hair, I'm actually going to put two biots. Um, and so in order to get that really split out nicely, I'm going to use a little bit of this Nature Spirit um, snowshoe rabbit's foot dubbing. So for the tail on this, I have this uh, tannish yellow turkey biot. It's a Nature Spirit product and I uh, really dig this color. So I'm just going to tie these in one at a time on the back of the fly. So as you can see I have a nice split tail. Now this fly can be used as either a hopper pattern or a stone fly or whatever. If you've got light colored terrestrials flying around this is a really good fly to have in your quiver. Uh, we were actually just fishing this uh, last week and it floated just really well, caught some fish on it. It was really good. Okay, the next step is I'm going to take a dark bar ginger piece of hackle and I'm going to tie it in at the back of this fly. And even though this is a size 8 hook, I've got about, you know, a size 12 uh, hackle on this because I don't want it to be uh, eating up that hook gap completely. Alright, for the body I'm going to just dub some more of this uh, Golden Stonefly uh, Nature Spirit Snowshoe Rabbit foot dubbing. Um, this stuff is really good. We we notice that it, it's, it's a pretty buoyant dubbing. Okay, so you can see I've got a, a pretty good dubbing noodle and I'm just going to wrap this up the body and, and taper it ever so slightly as I do that. Okay, so I'm going to dub it about up to there. That's where our, our bullet head's going to come back and, and touch down. So we're going to leave it uh, bare right there. Then we're going to just, just going to take this hackle and wrap it forward. And you can see that I tied it in so that the shiny side is facing forward. On this fly, though, it's not going to matter a whole lot. So the cool thing about bullet heads is you can do a lot to add to the, the flotation of this fly. Um, I'm actually going to have multiple layers of wing on this fly. Uh, the first layer that I'm going to lay down is going to be um, two or three CDC feathers. Uh, this color is amber. That's really cool, kind of a, a dirty yellowish color. So I'll just kind of line all those up a little bit and then tie those in directly on top of the hackle. About like that. And this is where I'm going to start tying in some deer hair. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my thread out for some GSP. So I have some I believe 150 denier GSP thread. And I'll just uh, attach that on where my other thread's hanging right now. Alright, so now there's go going to be a wing on top of this CDC. <clears throat> and what I've got is Nature Spirit Stimulator Deer Hair um, in a nice yellowish tannish color. Okay, I've prepared and stacked a kind of a sparse clump of this. I don't want this to really be very bulky because the bullet head will will kind of flare out and, and create a little bit of the bulk. So I'm going to put that about the same length as that CDC and I'll just tie that down. A few loose wraps at first and then I'll advance forward a little bit and then crank it down. And what that does is it ties it down tight in the front of that clump and in the back it's kind of loose so that it doesn't flare like it did in the front. Now I've got quite a bit of, of bare hook shank left and that's what I'm going to use to tie in my, my clump of hair for the bullet head. 
And I've got some Nature Spirit Select Cow Elk. And you can use pretty much any hair you want for this bullet head. But I, I really like this Cow Elk um, just because of the coloration of it. Okay, I've got a fairly healthy clump of, of cow elk. Um, I mean, you're going to need maybe a little bit more than you think for this fly, for a bullet head. For a size 8 fly, I mean, here's my hair stacker. You can see it's pretty loaded full of hair. So that, that's kind of a gauge of, of how much hair you're going to need to do this. For a size 8, anyway. Okay, so now when I take this hair out of the stacker, I want to make sure that the hair is facing forward, like this. Just so that uh, when I pull it out, it's facing the direction that I'll tie the hair in. Okay, so I'm going to gauge maybe roughly the length of that wing for my tie-in point. Because I'm going to tie it in here, and then it's going to loop back over, and then it's, I'm going to tie it in again. And so it should end up just a little bit shorter than this, this wing that, that we're going to tie it over. And a lot of guys will, will trim their, their uh, hair before they tie it in. And I actually feel like I have better control over, over the hair if I just hold on to it while I tie in and, and trim it after the fact. So there I've got it measured. I'll just kind of use a, a pinch wrap technique, two loose wraps. And then I will flare this hair and spin it around the hook shank while I'm holding on to these butts. And the reason I do that is if I hold on to those butts, it kind of makes the head a little bit fatter on the top of the fly. And I, I kind of like the look of that. So now I'll come in. Notice I haven't let go of the butts yet. And I trim all those off. <clears throat> okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and wrap through the butts of the hair. Just kind of do a loose wrap, grab onto the hair, and pull straight down. And that will keep your hair from spinning any more than, than it already has. Alright, so we've got a... I mean, if, if you look at this fly head on... You'll see that that's pretty well flared all the way around the, the hook. Even though I didn't let it spin, I was holding on to the, the fibers. Okay, now sometimes, as you can see right here, it gets a little bit skinny. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add just a tiny bit of dubbing right in that skinny spot so that it, when the hair pulls over, uh, to form the bullet head, it's not going to want to sink down in toward the head. So when I wrap this dubbing, I'll just kind of pull the, for the fibers forward so I don't trap any of them. So now when I tie this, this hair down behind this clump of dubbing, that tie down point is going to want to stay right where that dubbing clump is. It's not going to want to sink or scoot forward. And that will add a lot to the durability of your fly as well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hair back a little bit and I'm going to see how far my hook point or my the, the eye of my hook is exposed. And as you can see, it's not exposed extremely well. Not a big deal. Um, I can just take my fingers and push that back a little bit and it should expose that eye. So now the eye is completely exposed. We're ready to tie this bullet head. So um, the bullet head is doing kind of exactly what I wanted it to. So as I pull it, pull it over, it's just barely shorter than that back wing that that uh, other wing of deer hair that we put in here so it's looking good so far another thing you know in our other video i used a bullet head tool and i've actually found that it's easier just to use my fingers to create the bullet head so i'm going to take kind of my whole hand and i'm, I'm going to grab the fibers and pull them back like this 
And it's okay if some of them pop out kind of like that because you can actually start the bullet head with half of your hair and then pick up any of the fibers that, that stray if you have to. But, I, you know, with this size of fly, I should be able to get them all just like this. And now if I just take my thread and make, you know, a couple loose wraps just like this, and now cinch down, creates a pretty sweet little bullet head. So you can see I have one little straggler piece right here. I'm just going to nip that off. And uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the bottom of this fly. Uh, there's a lot of hair covering up that nice body that we built. So I'm, I'm going to take and trim away the deer hair that's covering that up. I mean the, the elk hair. So now you can see the body underneath this, this head. Now because this GSP is white and ugly and pasty like John Stockton, I'm going to cover it up with our original thread. Alright, couple final steps here. I'm going to take some grizzly barred rubber legs and I'm just going to tie those in. Um, one, just one leg on each side. So I like to tie that in like this with the long side facing forward. And then I just loop that around and tie that on the other side. Curtis does it a different way, but his way is wrong. And then, uh, the final step is to take some of this parapost material um, and I'm going to make an overwing over the whole fly with it. So I'm going to tie it in just about like that and then I'm going to pull that back and just wrap ever so slightly over, the, over where I tied that in. Try that again. So I'll tie it in just like that, and I'll pull it back, wrap over the top of itself just one or two times, and then trim that about the length of my bullet head hair. Alright, and the trick is to whip finish it without catching anything. You only need a couple turns because now we're going to reinforce the head. Okay, so I've trimmed the front legs shorter, and as, as you can see, I've trimmed the back legs roughly the length of that longest wing. Now the final thing on this fly is that this hair is under a lot of pressure, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the head with some hard as whole head cement. It's just a, a lacquer type uh, head cement, and I'm just going to come in here and just kind of take it on the head and even with this on the the head it will you know catch some fish teeth here and there so you know it'll soak in and and you know it will uh, make the head a lot more durable now as you can see I did get a little bit of um, head cement down in the eye of the hook and I've got a little scrap piece of hackle here that I haven't used so I'm just going to take that and stick it down in the hook eye and run that through and that will actually take the, the head cement out of that eye. Anyway, uh, we fished this fly with Loon Loxa uh, Floatant. We, we like that floatant because this does have CDC and it won't gum up the CDC. It makes it float really high and dry all day long. And uh, you know, all these materials along with a lot more are found on our store site, store.flyfishfood.com.